Christ. I know we can think about this miracle from many sides. We can talk about the resurrection. We can talk about the power of God of raising the dead. We can talk about the divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can talk about how the grace and the work work together for raising the person. Many contemplations can be done on this miracle, but today I would like to talk about one aspect. It is the power of love. The power of love. Because I see in this miracle, love is everywhere in the miracle. And love is behind what is done, the great things that has been done in this miracle. It began with the love, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ to his heavenly Father. We see in this miracle how our Lord Jesus Christ was very enthusiastic to declare the glory of God. When he heard about the death of Lazarus, he told his disciples that the sickness of Lazarus, it is for the glory of God, that God might be glorified in his son. And when he met Martha, and Mary, he told them, if you have believed, you would see the glory of God. So he was very enthusiastic to declare the glory of God for his deep love for his heavenly Father. And before the end of the story, we see our Lord Jesus Christ standing on the tomb of Lazarus, raising his eyes to heaven and giving thanks to God. St. John said, Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know that you always hear me. Thank you, Father. And he said, thank you, Father, at the time that he was groaning deeply in his heart and in the midst of the tragedy. And he said, thank you, God, at the time that he was weeping. But to show us how the son loved his father that much, that thank you, God, thank you for everything and concerning everything. So, Firstly, what was behind this miracle is the love of Jesus to his Father. And then the love of our Lord Jesus Christ to the people, that they might believe in God. In his prayer on the tomb of Lazarus, he said, I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. So our Lord Jesus Christ was looking for the face of the people, the belief in the people, of the people in God, and that God has sent his son to us. It was the love of our Lord Jesus Christ to the people that was behind this great miracle. And at the end of the story, many of the Jews put their faith in him they believed in him. So his hopes of the, in the face of the people and God, his hopes are fulfilled that many believed in him. So it was the love of our Lord Jesus Christ to his Father, and it was the love of our Lord Jesus Christ to the people, and also it was the love of our Lord Jesus Christ to the disciples. When he heard 
when he knew that Lazarus is dead. He said to his disciples, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. See, he was looking also for the belief, the faith of his disciples. He said to them, look, I am in a tragic situation. I am deeply sad, but I'm happy at the same time. I'm happy for you because you will have a stronger faith when you see the coming miracle. So it was also for his love to his disciples. And needless to mention, because no of you know that, that it was, it was because his love for Mary, Martha, and Lazarus themselves. And how often the word love is repeated in this miracle. In John 11:13, 13, when they sent a message to Christ about the sickness of Lazarus, they said to him, Lord, the one you love is, is sick, the one you love. And if you look to the origin of the word love in the Greek, you will find it the philo. It says the love with much passion, with much personal connection. And also in John 11:5. It says, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So again, the word love is mentioned to emphasize the love of Christ to Lazarus' family, to Lazarus, to Mary, and to Martha. And again, in John 11:11, 11, 11, in the same miracle, our Lord Jesus Christ is telling his disciples that our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. And the word is that it is translated friend in English. Actually, it is the word in Greek, philos. And philos means our beloved, that we have personal passion and we have personal connection with him. And on the grave, when he wept, the Jews testified for his love and they said, see how he loved him. So it was also the love of Christ, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ to Lazarus, to Mary, and to Martha that was behind this great miracle. So I see love everywhere. Love, the one who has the fullness of love, the one who has the fullness of deity, because God is love. So the one who has the fullness of deity is the one who has the fullness of love. And we see this fullness of love shown and going to every direction. Love to the Father, love to the people, love to the disciples, love to Lazarus, love to Mary, love to Martha, love to everyone. And look what happened because of this great love that Christ had shown in this miracle. For this great love, he accepted to go in Judea at the time that he was threatened to be stoned by the Jews. When he declared his intention to go to the Judea, the disciples said to him, a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you are going back there. So he considered to go to Judea to raise Lazarus despite the threat of death, because he was moved and he was driven by his great love. And because and because of that great love, Jesus groaned in his heart. As St. John said in John 11, 34, 
he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Look how amazing is his love that the Son of God, who is the pleasure of his Father, who has the fullness of deity, the Son of God, feels deeply moved in spirit and feels troubled. And then we hear that Jesus wept. Jesus wept. This how love has moved him and this how love has done in him. And then as you see, the greatest fruit of this great love was one of the greatest miracles that Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out. I see in this miracle how that great love embraced the death of Lazarus. And because that great love embraced the death of Lazarus, Lazarus came out from the tomb. It is a victory. It is not only showing us how mighty is the Lord God, it is not only showing us how the divinity of Christ could do miracles, but it shows us also that this great love when embrace the death of Lazarus, could raise Lazarus from the death. It is the same great love that God offered to us in Jesus Christ on the cross. And when he stretched his hand and he embraced the death of the whole world, when he embraced the death of the whole world with his love, he gave us all the resurrection. It is the power of love. It is the victory of love. And today we are invited to enjoy this victory of love when we be embraced in the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he embraces us with his Holy Sacrament, giving us Himself, uniting Himself with us, He can raise, He will raise every one of us. He will restore any weaknesses in our lives. He will have victory over any weaknesses or any symptoms of death in our life. My beloved, I think this is what we need in our lives, in our relationships. We need to be embraced first with Christ, the resurrected Lord, and with his love to be raised from our old nature to become new creation. And this was this what we need today. We need, we need the same miracle of raising Lazarus for the salvation of every sinner. And this miracle is offered by the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only his one and the only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Our gathering today is celebration for that great love, the love of the Heavenly Father offered to all the sinners of the world that they might have eternal life that they might have victory over their death. 
that they might have life instead of death. And we need that miracle, the power of love in that miracle. We need it in restoration of all the relationships between the spouses, between parents and their children, between the families, between the friends, between the colleagues, between everyone. We need that power of love, the love of Christ to be in us, that with this power of love, we can embrace the weaknesses of everyone and raise them from their deaths. A loving wife can raise an evil husband. A loving husband can raise an evil wife. I am sorry to use the word evil, but I have to use it to show the difference between death and life, between hate and love. And this is the miracle of love. If there is a loving, a truly loving spouse, he can raise his or her spouse. If there is a loving parent, he can raise his children. If there is a loving child, children, they can raise their parents. If we have the love of Christ in us, this love of Christ means the power of the deity in us, and this power of God in us can be embrace the world, erase the world from their deaths. And the love of God and the love of Christ constrains us, drive us how to work, how to deal, how to speak, and with this love, we can do a miracle for the glory of God the Father. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.